There is a time coming when this whole world is going to be under the control of Antichrist in such a way that everyone is going to be worshiping him except a minority, those whose names were written in the Lamb's Book of Life from before the foundation of the world. And we can talk about that in a few moments because the good news is, and I say to all of our listeners, you can find out whether or not your name is written there. And we'll explain mm -hmm. in the next segment how that can happen. Mm -hmm. But the point is this, that everyone is worshiping the beast. Everyone is bowing before him. How is he controlling the world? Through economics. You know, the Bible says when this second beast arises that uh, you cannot buy or sell unless his name is on your forehead or on your hand. Of course, it's very easy to speculate today, isn't it, that a computer chip would do it. You know, yes. there are computer chips. And think of how efficient that would be in terms of identifying you, controlling you. You wouldn't be able to go into a jewel store or Dominic's and buy something, buy a loaf of bread, unless you have his mark, unless you have his computer chip, if that's the way it's going to be done. So, through economics, he controls the world. I want to say, just in passing, that we can understand how this would happen if we had a worldwide currency. And this worldwide currency would come about after an economic decline where the entire world then would be unified with the same kind of money. Which we're talking about even right now. Which we're talking about even now. You're absolutely right. And I know that there are some economists that I've read who say that that's exactly what we need. So here's the setup now. If you don't worship the beast, uh, you can't buy or sell. Your children are starving. Well, it's a forced worship. Forced worship. Would you worship the beast in order to get some food if your children were starving? We're talking today about faith at the breaking point. And the question is, what would you have to go through in order to deny the Lord and to say, I can no longer believe in his love? At what point would your faith break? You know, Luther was talking about this when he was speaking about the Turks who were running over Europe in those days because of the Ottoman Empire. And he made the statement, he said, what do you do when you look all around and you see no reason to believe that God is on your side because the Turks are overcoming the Christians, etc.? He said, in effect, at that time what you do is you believe God's bare word. In other words, you believe his promises against all evidence that you can see around you. The question is whether or not we would be able to do that. Yeah, in even, the midst if, of even if it caused us our death. In other words, one of the things that is absolutely astonishing about church history is that people in this life did not win. They were killed, they were tortured, their children were raped or killed in front of them and they still kept the faith. Some of them were buried alive keeping the faith, okay? Now, we here in America and maybe in Western Europe and other parts of the world, we can't even imagine holding on to belief in God under those kinds of extreme circumstances. 